Okay, call the meeting to order 6.02 p.m. on Wednesday, September 8th. Um, meeting minutes, anybody have any issues, comments, editorials? No, nope. move we approve. Second. All those in favor, Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me, aye. Okay, we're good. Uh, vendor and payroll, payroll warrants, everyone good? Good. Okay. Um, public comment. Is anyone here? There's only Julie, and I think Julie's on the agenda, so Julie doesn't get to talk unless she has something other than, um, you know, <laughs> she wants to talk about Whitley's roads or whatever. But other than that, we're good. Um, okay, we're going to keep moving on then. And speaking of Julie, uh, we have scheduled appointments. Green Jeans Farms to negotiate the terms of a host community agreement for a marijuana cultivation establishment to be located at 149 Christian Lane. Um, Brian, I understand that you and Joyce had a conversation with Julie, so I'm going to let you guys speak uh, to your leisure. Okay. Oh, I'm resting for it, Brian. <laughs> um, so, so Joyce. Myself and Julie, we had a, a conversation about the host community agreement, um, and uh, what we settled on was was the exact terms that this town has that the board has um, insisted for all marijuana cultivators in town. Um, and it was it was a good conversation, and um, that's really about it. Um, if you recall, this is a, a proposal at 149 Christian Lane. That's Long Plain Farm. Um, it is, and I, it, it, I'm sure Julie will be very well aware of this. It is the property does abut the elementary school. Um, the the greenhouse is where the where the use will take place is is outside the, the required buffer area from that's required in the zoning bylaw. Um, I think there was Julie's had some contact with I think the school committee chairperson. Um, so the school was, was made aware of it and had the opportunity to provide comments. Um, but, uh, what else Joyce? Well, I just wanted to say kind of big picture and we have lots of HCAs with lots of groups. Um, the HCA here would not be changed by the many other things that, you know, happen outside of the HCA. Um, but like so, so far. Um, somebody's calling me from the town offices, huh? I'm gonna. It's a robocall. It's a robocall. Oh, okay. Um, sorry about that interruption. Um, there, I mean, there's many things that could prevent, uh, Julie and her group from being successful at this location. Um, and that's sort of on her to do the due diligence to really understand what's going on at that particular site. It has some particular problems that we don't need to go into here, um, but that's really on, on her to do that due diligence and to find out what's really going on and to you know, not necessarily take things at face value and check the facts and so on. That's, um, that's sort of outside of this agreement. So there, there may be things that prevent this from going through in the end, um, but they've agreed to the things that we've asked people to other cultivators to agree to. So um, the, as far as I'm concerned, the HCA is, is fine. Um, there, I mean, there could be other things that, that get in the way. Um, and those, I just, you know, it, it's a risky business. And um, I wish everybody was always as honest as, and, and, you know, upfront as, uh, as we would want people to be um, about their situations. So, um, so that that said, I know there's been, you know you've got a bumpy road ahead of you. I'm sure. Um, I I don't think this HCA is the is should be a, a roadblock. I think this should be fine. Julie, do you have anything to say? I don't. I think Brian and Joyce covered it pretty well, and I appreciate you guys hearing me and working with me on it. My only question, and it's just a question with no. You know, um, because it is so close to a school, 
can is was there any conversation about additional educational i don't want, i don't necessarily want to hang my hat on funding but educational opportunities where you know because it literally is in the back the back neighborhood what how do we take it how do how do we turn if, if it were to happen how do we turn that into a educable moment for the most impressionable people in our community, you know, specifically four-year-olds to, to 12, 13-year-olds? Um, and maybe there's nothing, but I, I just can't help but wonder whether the HCA could, could, could speak to what additional things because of geographic footprint could be done. And, and maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree, but I'm just asking. Uh, but it did not come up in our conversations. Um, we have really based our HCAs on giving everybody the same uh, responsibilities and that, and you know, it could be anybody who's next to, so we didn't, consider the geographic proximity to the school um, for this particular one, that this one should be singled out for that? No, we did not. Okay. Nor like There are other things that are unique about this one. We also didn't single those out as deserving a different kind of treatment. Okay, it, I think it'd be really hard to justify it just based on physical proximity when they are abiding by the setbacks in our bylaws. So yeah. they, we did we did not as a group when we made the APA take that up as an issue. So I don't know if that means barking up the wrong tree, but it just it didn't come up. And okay, so, yeah, I I just wonder whether whether um, <clears throat> additional monies for education is appropriate because of geographic proximity. That's my only that's my only thought. And if if people feel like there's plenty of money in that budget already to address um the education component and uh if if people don't think that there's a an angle for lack of a better term um around being in in in, in the backyard then fine i'm just i'm just making sure we discuss all all mm -hmm. scenarios i i agree with joyce i don't think that they should be penalized for the geographic location given that they're living by all the setback requirements and every other requirement that everyone else is. And Fred, don't, please don't misunderstand. I, I'm not, my, 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 my words are not intended to be a, be seen as a penalty. My words are intended to always look at opportunity. So I don't see that as a penalty. I see that as, as, as the chance for, bigger, better, faster, stronger uh, because of, 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 of the, the, the backyard, the visual, what, what have you. If, if you guys don't think so, that's fine. But it is in no way to be seen or construed as a penalty. It is an opportunity. I have been the biggest proponent around of, of, of cultivation facilities and retail facilities. I think it's an economic bonanza. Uh, it, is, it is not meant to be a, a red herring or, or a penalty. So, okay, yeah, just as long as I don't think there should be any sort of additional burden. And if there's additional opportunity, given location, fine, but uh, not, not anything that is above and beyond what other growers would have to do. Okay. Okay, without any other comments, I think, I think uh, we're in good shape. Brian, what are the next steps? Uh, so there would be a, so you want to vote to approve the HCA? Okay. Uh, motion to approve. That's so moved. I'll second. second that. Okay. All those in favor, Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me? Yes. Okay. Julie, thanks so much for joining us. We need to come over and sign that at some point? <clears throat> yes, it'll be on the table um, tonight if when everybody can come over. Um, Obviously, it doesn't need to be done tonight, but and Julie, if you can send over a, a certification form for the HCA too, that would be good. Do that. Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks. you all.
Thank you, Julie. Good luck. Right. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Um, COVID-19, Brian, you, you take this. Yep. So I got an email. I received an email this morning from the Board of Health saying that um, they voted to require masks in all town buildings um, to require social distancing. I'm going to just pull it up real quick. Um, and I, I will admit that this caught me off guard because uh, I didn't even know it was being discussed. Um, and I thought a Board of, uh, Board of Health member was going to be here, but um, maybe they're not here yet. Um, mandate masks and social distancing inside all town buildings for the end of October based on trend of increasing COVID cases in Franklin County and Massachusetts. Besides masking and distancing inside town buildings, we recommend reverting back to limited capacity inside town buildings to 50% with access to one household or person per visit. I'm not entirely clear what that means. Um, medical exemptions are allowed as are staff and individual offices away from the public. We voted this change to protect the most vulnerable residents while providing safe access for all to town offices and buildings. We'll, we will review this mandate as needed in October. Um, so that, that admittedly caught me off guard, uh, this morning. Um, so, I mean, I, I wanted to, to bring it to the board to see what the board wanted to do. Um, I, I, I don't see any issues with requiring face coverings inside town buildings. Uh, most people, most people that come in are, are, are wearing one anyways. Um, and most of the employees here were wearing it in the common areas anyways. Um, it, it strikes me as, as a little bit odd that, that we're requiring masks and single visits to the town offices, but we're still allowing at least without any further action by the select board or the board of health, we're still allowing, um, in-person public meetings, we're allowing in-person events at the town hall. Even if we were at 50% capacity, obviously we need to take into account social distancing, but 50% capacity at the town hall, it, upstairs is around 75 to 80 people. Um, e even if we're wearing masks, uh, masks aren't 100% foolproof and, and neither is vaccination. Um, in terms of, of transmission or, or, or contracting COVID-19. Obviously it seems to do better in terms of uh, reducing hospitalizations and, and severe disease and things like that. But, but, it, but it struck me as if we should be, uh, really if we should be doing more in terms of our town buildings, if, if we're gonna be requiring masks and single visits, it, it seemed like it wasn't right to a lot, you know, to allow these meetings where we have, we could have, I don't know, 10 or 15 people in, in the conference room here, masked and socially distant. Um, it, it just didn't seem like it fit, I guess. Um, and I, th I thought it was worth a discussion as to, as to if we want to do more or, or if, or if we're just going to do that, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, if we're going to allow functions at, in functions and events at the town hall in 50%, I mean, we're in terms of masking and, and reduced capacity, we are going to rely on, on people's goodwill and honesty to, um, to follow that. I mean, tonight, the, the library has a concert at the town hall tonight. Um, and, you know, I, I relayed the information. They're going to have extra masks. They're going to be in inside the auditorium. Um, but it, it just strikes me as, as odd that we're going to allow large groups to gather if we're restricting visits to the town offices to, to single people. Um, so sure. I'll, be, I'll be quiet and, and allow discussion to happen. I, I'll, I'll jump in, uh, if people don't mind. Um, I actually think that we should restrict building access um, for the next couple months. I, I think that there's a reason that we did so well back in 
the winter and spring. And it was partially due obviously to the increase in vaccinations, but it was also because we were being very vigilant in not just in Waitley, but, every, but other places about mask wearing, social distancing, et cetera. Um, and I don't think it should surprise anyone that an uptick in, in um, cases will arise, uh, especially because of Delta. And I, I have no problem with the mask mandate. I have no problem um, restricting public building use, uh, certainly requiring masks to be inside and re redeploying the, 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 the distancing. Um, and then I, I also, uh, because of this, and I mentioned this to Brian earlier today, I think we need to be creative with um, the workspace in the town offices um, because it just so happens that we never finalized what we agreed to as a town to build the office partitions uh, way back when, when we decided to, to move into to the old library building as our town offices. We never finished that job and we never put up the town offices. And, and because of that now, we need to be creative because we have two people who do work in close proximity to each other. Um, and it's not fair to require them to wear masks always during the day because they're in the same in in the same room. Um, I, I think we need to figure out a workspace solution for those two individuals because everyone else has has their own office. Right. There are two there are two open offices right now that, that they can move into. One of them can but, move into. But but will but will that is that a temporary uh, vacancy because of hiring issues? Um no, one of the, one of them is 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 open. Okay, well, we, we should be putting one of those people in, yep. in in an office. Whoever doesn't do the public the the, the public interaction as much, um, that would be my that would be my take. I'll stop talking and get you guys feedback, but that's that's where I am. Mm. I've been I, thinking. Of, go on. Why don't you go first, Fred? Okay. No, I I, I agree, but I I think that we can just keep revisiting this at our board meetings every three weeks or two weeks, whatever it is, rather than setting a two month or what, you know, some definite time limit, this thing is moving and the regulations and guidelines are moving so quickly. I think essentially we should make it a regular feature of our agenda to revisit and to either loosen or tighten based on guidelines you know, in a given week, you know, to say that we're setting guidelines for the next two months, we don't know what course this is going to take over the next two months. Yeah. So I, I, I agree we should go back to the, the mask mandates. We should look after the welfare of our employees, uh, certainly heavily restrict the use of, you know, for the town hall for for concerts and the like, I don't know that that's an essential function. I think it's more important that we protect the health of our residents. Yeah, I've, I've been thinking about this a lot um, because it's it's like a conversation every day here where I work. And um, I was also, I, I was looking at the actual thing that we're, that's before us to perhaps um, approve of, um, it just says, you gotta wear a mask when you're inside the town buildings. It doesn't actually say anything about, you need to keep social distance, but it does say you have to wear a mask. And it reminded me a little bit of what we're doing at, what we're doing at Smith. It's basically the rule is indoor masking, unless you're in a room by yourself with the door closed, that's your office. Um, when I'm in my lab, even if I'm alone, I have to wear a mask because that's a place where other people could come in. Um, and it's a drag to wear a mask all day, <laughs> but um, it's it, it's what my employer requires, so I do it. Um, uh, but, and, and we're not doing social distancing. If you're indoors with somebody and you're wearing a mask, that's good enough, but, <laughs> I'm in a place where every student and every employee is required to be vaccinated 
unless you have a state sanctioned exemption. And so I'm in a place where 99% of the people are vaccinated and we don't have that. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm all on board with, we should probably be masking indoors. We probably should have been maybe for a couple of weeks, but we're, we're waiting on our board of health. Um, but there's nothing in this that says you can't have two people in a town office at the same time. Like I know in the, in the email uh, from the board of health, it said something about, uh, let me see, uh, it says access to one household or person per visit, but that's not actually in the thing that we're thinking of passing, right? And it doesn't actually say we, that people can't, if they're masked, sit close to each other or, or be close to each other. Um, so just want to be clear on what it is that we're, we're thinking of actually mandating is just basically indoor masking, right? We're not necessarily mandating physical distance. Um, no, I, but I think, think we're also looking at, do we want to continue to allow group meetings? Right. Correct. Okay. So, so that's the, the, so that's the thing. So to make our, our building policy a little more consistent is the, that's sort of a separate question. And I do feel like if we just say indoor masking and we don't have a population that's 99.9% .9 vaccinated, then I think we're asking for trouble. That's just, um, you know, I, just from what I've learned uh, here in my, in my job, um, that we're in trouble if, you know, we, if we, and, and, and like, I, I don't know how to enforce any of this either. So if there's um, an in-person meeting, who is actually gonna police that? How do you get someone who won't put on a mask to do it? Can you force them? Should you call the police? A lot of those problems are taken care of if we go back to Zoom meetings. And I know a lot of people don't like Zoom meetings, but you know, as soon as you get to the point of, well, we have a mask mandate, if it's a couple of people at a time, it's a little easier to manage. If it's a room full of people, then, you know, who, who the heck is going to police that? And, you know, especially if people in the room don't necessarily agree. So I'm kind of on the side of, um, and I'm trying to pull up the, the other word document that, um, that, uh, yeah, there it is. Um, uh, all buildings shall be open to the public for the regular hours. Um, that one mandates the social distancing. Then, um, face coverings uh, with the exception of the enclosed workspaces uh, and the medical exemption. And then no in-person public meetings. And I don't know if this means the library might have to cancel a concert at some point. Presumably not tonight if they're already started. Um, I'm... Yeah. I'll share to, 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 to me, that's the worry that, that just doing masking indoors is not going to be enough unless you have a population that is also, oh, oh, by the way, we're all getting tested regularly too. I get tested once a week. Students get tested twice a week. Um, they've actually caught um, three cases already and none of them transmitted locally. They were all caught before the people were able to transmit. We're not doing any of those things in our towns, right? We're, and, and, you know, they, we, we don't really have the resources to do that uh, or the, the staff to do that. So I just think if we, we, we've got to pass both of these, I think. And I think maybe John and Fred are also arguing um, that as well. Um, I think it is important to be consistent. And I'm glad Brian brought this up as um you know, just passing one is really not very consistent without passing the other. Well, um, Joyce, that, that's exactly what I was saying. I mean, I, 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 I think we should go be going back to what was so effective as I think I, I pointed out yeah. Yeah. Know, in the spring. I just, I just do. Um, I completely agree. Yes. I would add to this, and I know this is going to talk a firestorm, but um, 
you know, there's free testing out there now. And I think the town employees should be asked to um, have a COVID test once every couple of weeks. So you, you can go to CVS and, and get it done. No problem at all. You can do the self drop. I, I, I forget what it's called, but, but testing is readily available. Um, and, and we should be asking our employees to do that as well. For the, and, 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 and Fred, you're correct to remind us that it's, you know, it's always been every two weeks that we discuss this at our, at our, at our board meetings, but we need to reiterate the fact that we need to, to give it perhaps more time on the agenda than just glossing over it like we, like we have been yeah. when, when the times were getting better. But I, I, I with Joyce in terms of the, and, and Fred in terms of the, the duality um, actions, but I, I think we should also discuss whether town employees should be required to um, to get testing once every, you know, even 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 two weeks, um, because again of the readily availability, the ready ready availability of of free testing, and it's easy and it's quick and it's painless. Mm. I did not know that free testing was available at CVS. Yeah, I thought it was free vaccines. No, it's free testing. And it's still free testing at UMass. Yeah, at UMass I had known about. Now it's probably up to individual CVSs whether they are administering those, but I know that it is it is it is available. And you, you'd be talking about all town employees, not just those working the offices or indoor jobs. For consistency, Fred, I would be, yeah. Hmm. And if people want to get mad at me who are town employees, well, you know, I've been doing this a long time. It's the way it goes. Well, I would want a little more information um, about kind of what's the burden of what we're asking, because it might mean somebody needs to drive somewhere and it takes an hour. Do we pay them for that hour um, or or what? If there's you know some other way to do the testing that's really convenient and doesn't take their time, but it uh, it costs us a little money, then that might be another way to go. I sort of feel okay. like I don't have enough information about how to implement that to make that decision tonight, but I, I certainly think it's something we could look into. And we also need to determine what our remedy would be if someone either doesn't comply or doesn't comply in time, you know, for a Friday morning test or something like that. Yeah. Fair points. But again, I, I just want the dialogue. Yeah, and we'd also have to see how that would play with the, with our one union in well, two unions in town, which are the, which are the, mm -hmm. the school, the schools, the teachers yeah. union and the and the paraprofessionals union. Has the, how, how would this if we're talking about not having? meetings in person in town buildings how does that apply to the elementary school oh it, it applies in the sense that the school committee doesn't meet in person they would meet by zoom we only control public meetings we don't control what happens at the school that's under the, the school committee and the administration control that so we can only control something about their school committee meetings does that sound about right brian yeah, I, I think the board's authority is over is is over town buildings, um, over town buildings, which it has control over. So it, it, it doesn't have control over the school. Yeah. And the, the right. library and the school are the two buildings we don't have direct control over. It, the, and the library has been more than willing to hmm. um, go along with, with what the select board and board of health recommends. Yeah. So it seemed like what they wanted, what the Board of Health wrote in their email was um, limiting capacity inside town buildings to 50%. I assumed they're talking about meeting room capacity, not office <clears throat> capacity. And that doesn't get directly addressed in either of the things that are kind of on the table here tonight. But um, that sort of has some implications about if we're still allowing the town hall to be used, 
will we officially bring that down to 50% capacity um, and complying with masks? We can always ask the Board of Health to go check some of these and see if people are complying with the masks as well, I suppose. But they've got a lot on their plate, so they might not they might not appreciate being asked to police that. Well, how many how many non town meetings are taking place in our buildings right now? How many events are taking place at, at the old town hall and the library? Do we have a number? Um, uh, there's. So non town, so that would include, I'll include the Grange and the library holding events. It, we probably average about once, one a week, probably. Yeah, I, I'm just not comfortable. I mean, it, it's, we have a heavily dominant senior population. And the, the rise is, it, it's the highest rate of infection since what, January right now? when we had all these policies in place. And I think we're, by not implementing the same policies that we had fall, early winter, whatever it was, we're just, we're, we're just not acting because we're trying to figure out how to put the toothpaste back in the tube. And I, I also think, think that if, if we don't put tight restrictions on now, we're just gonna have to later on anyway. As we get to the winter, it doesn't fig spread doesn't get figure to get any better as people go inside more. So I just think we'll be if we don't do it now, we'll just be back and have to do it soon. I, I'm with you again. I I I I think Fred, what you point it's fluid. We revisit every two weeks. We're not going to anticipate or yeah. not anticipate, but we're going to have this policy, and we're not going to have public meetings, and we're not going to have public events for, for, for the foreseeable future. Yeah. And that's what this one says under number four, the last sentence is no other meetings, events, or functions shall take place inside any town building until further notice. So that means if there's a function, an event at the library, that's not a meeting that kind of falls under that, um, falls under that. So, oh, sorry. Uh, if say the library, we're having that concert, Next week, that would fall under this. They'd have to cancel a concert, right? <clears throat> or move it outside. Yep. Or move it outdoors, right? So this does kind of, it kind of does what you're saying, John, I think. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I, that, that would be my suggestion. And, and uh, I guess this is maybe a comment more directed toward, toward the Board of Health, but I mean, I mean, this, the scope of what uh, of what's being requested here, and and the the number of people that it's going to impact is quite small compared to non municipal establishments in town. Um, mm, mm. And I don't know if there have been conversations around that. I'm not advocating for that, but. Mm. It, if you look at, at scale, um, it, it, this is probably actually going to ha have a small impact, um, mm -hmm. a, a smaller impact. Um, and, and it was when I when when I obviously I, I hear different reactions from different people when when I spread the news around, but it, it, it's a, it's an inconsistency in what and what the, the Board of Health is asking. Um, so. Hmm. So they're not asking, say, any restaurants in town to do anything similar. Correct. I don't know if folks felt singled out or what, well, probably felt singled out. Um, hmm. But it, I just wanted to make that point. It's not an argument for not doing this. It's maybe an right. argument for we're looking at, at at other mitigation measures that could be right. taken, but that's not necessarily relevant to, to this. I, I think we should do what we have <coughs> immediate authority over um, and then seek guidance on, on other pieces. 
you know, it, history is an indicator and we put off these steps, not we, but collectively the universal, we put off a lot of steps early on because we didn't want to take those steps and look what happened. And if we take these steps now, I think we can quickly reverse this trend and so that we don't have to go back to draconian measures potentially. But I, I think we will have to go back to more draconian measures if we don't take these little steps now that are relatively small inconveniences. Yes, they're inconveniences, as Joyce points out. They just are, and it stinks. And 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 I'm I'll editorialize. I'm ticked off at people who didn't take the necessary steps and they get sick, and now we're going back to what we worked so hard to get away from. But I'm well, you guys know my position. I'll right. keep talking yeah. But we, yeah, we control what we control, and it would take the governor to make right. anything else happen. Um, so, and, I, and it's, it, you know, whatever whatever he wants to do, he'll do. I, I'm sure. But I, I think we have two pretty good um, statements here. What are these? Uh, uh, the face covering order for town buildings, and the order establishing. COVID-19 protocols for town buildings. I think these are, it's a shorter version of what we had done before, I think. Um, the others may have had a little more information because Zoom was new. <laughs> I don't need quite as much information in there. I like that it specifies uh, that you use the town of Waitley Zoom account so we can have the recordings and have that go more straightforwardly. Um, I, uh, I like that there is a, an exception possible. That's John and Brian gets to decide about those. Um, and I think it meets all the other re legal requirements where we have to have an exemption for you know, medical or uh, people with disabling conditions for the masking part. Um, I think this is probably the best we can do on the notice we have here. And I think it's good for what we can do now. That said, we revisit it in greater depth than we have been mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Okay, do I hear a motion then? Uh, should we do this one at a time? Um, uh, I, yeah. move, I move that we uh, uh, approve the face covering order for town buildings uh, as presented. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, yep. Okay, and I further moved uh, that we approve the order establishing the COVID-19 protocols for town buildings as presented. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, yep. Okay, so moved unanimously. Let's keep the ball rolling, Brian. All right. Um, old business to discuss days and times the town offices are open to the public. Um, we did a trial run in the summer of having the offices closed on Fridays in terms of the town clerk and treasurer collector. Both are um, less than uh, 40 hour week positions. So there's going to be times when the offices was closed, when the office, when those offices are closed. Um, I continue to work on Friday mornings till noon, and there were very few people that came. Um, I think I probably counted two. Um, mm -hmm. And there's been a tremendous slowdown since COVID of people coming into the offices. Um, I would say on a on a on a busy day, maybe five people come in over an eight hour period. Um, maybe if there's marriage intentions, it's a little bit higher because two people are coming in at once, but. Um, most people are, are using, uh, non-in-person means of, of doing business with the town. Um, I guess it took a pandemic to do that, but, um, a lot of people are doing stuff online and, and through email and in the mail, in the mail now. Um, I mean, so my recommendation would be to keep the office hours as they were in the summer. Um, so that would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, um, eight to four, and then there's there's the evening hours. Um, 
for the, the treasure collector. Um, I haven't heard feedback really either way. But my my experience has been that on Friday mornings, there's very few people that, that come in. I would agree. And also, at, the longer these hours are in effect, the more people will get used to them and know not to come in on Friday morning. So the, the longer it stays in effect, the less of a problem it becomes. And it's also something we can revisit if there's all yeah. of a sudden a rush of people coming in um, on Friday mornings. Um, we can uh, we can reconsider. I, I think the biggest the, the biggest inconvenience, and I use that term loosely, um, are meetings that suddenly want to be held on a Tuesday, and if the town offices close at noon, then you can't get that meeting posted, so you're not going to be able to meet until Wednesday. That's the only one that I can think of. Um, I don't know how frequent that is. Um, but so be it, I guess. Yeah. And I think, I think Amy has expressed her willingness to check email on Friday in post when needed in an emergency. That, that's great. If she's still willing to do that, that's wonderful. Yeah. And if I'm here, I've, I've posted meetings as well. So I don't get yelled at too often, but it still gets posted. <laughs> Okay. Do we need to do we need to make a motion, Brian, or is this just? Um, if the board's fine, we'll just continue the hours that are. Yeah. That we've been doing in the summer. Good. Perfect. Fine. Um, okay. Vacancies. Um, so they're starting to pile up, and I'm I'm just wondering if we have. I just wanted to brainstorm some ways to try to fill those vacancies. Um, I mean, so we have. They can see the cultural council. We have two on the council on aging now. Um, cemetery commission, there's still a vacancy. Housing committee, I think there's actually two. Rec commission, two, one. It's, it's a total of nine. It's total nine available. I don't think um, there are, we need to do a reappointment, I think, but because there is eight, and, but, but the one person wants to get back on. So I, I can look, but... Yeah. You know, let's let's create a bench if if you know. Yeah. I'm sure there are people on the rec committee who would like to get off the rec committee and go to a different one. Not necessarily. I mean, I mean the one that's the one that's going to come to a head pretty soon is Council on Aging because now they're down to three. Um, I've been trying to get a member for uh, the senior center director hiring and um, one of. <laughs> One person resigned when I asked. <laughs> Maybe I asked wrong, but um, and the the other two were were, were busy. So, um, and it I, and I understand it's a tough time now with pandemic and and mm -hmm. but it also if if should be kind of easier because you can meet via Zoom. But um, is there a web page with vacancies? Um, there's something posted on on the website of uh, yeah, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking more in terms of you, you can click a vacancy to get an a uh, uh, sort of a, a a responsibility description uh, an understanding of what the what the role is what the organization does and then you can if you like what you read you can click the next link to um, throw your hat into the ring, just making it as easy as possible to volunteer. I, I sometimes wonder whether it's just not that easy. I, I think, I think part of it, I think that's part of it. Um, mm -hmm. if, if people don't know what's, if people don't know what they're volunteering for, they're not going to volunteer. I think you're right. Um, we can look into sort of that chain of information and how that's being uh, put out there. I mean, I think at this point it, it's, it's the town website and I think give it a week and in the post probably gets buried under household hazardous waste day and food clinics. Right, that's um, I'm saying. It should be its own page. It should have its own tab. Yeah. 
with the mm -hmm. clickable links. Read more. Yeah, this is interesting. Sign me up. Again, cultural council. I haven't the foggiest idea why there's a vacancy on the cultural council because you make friends by giving away money and you meet like three times a year. Oh, it's because people like, I'm going to actually age out of that one as well, because the person who's, who was uh, assigned six years ago, like you, you got term limits and mine won't be up until October. So pretty soon there's going to be two vacancies on the cultural council. Oh, because there's term limits to the cultural council because it's probably seen as graft. Yeah, uh, yeah, it could, yeah, it, it could be. Um, but yeah, the Cultural Council probably realistically has two. Big John, can I interest you in the Cultural Council? They only meet three times a, a year and they give away money. Fred. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, yeah, term limits, just like the open meeting law, it doesn't apply to the state. Yeah. Well, wow. uh, is that too soon? We all, we all know that the state makes laws that have no connection with rural life in Massachusetts. It's all about 495 mm -hmm. and East. Um, all right, so I, I like the idea of, of making a separate page and trying to get more information out there. I guess that still requires somebody to come to the website. Um, mm -hmm. What's our visiting, what's our, what's our, what's our, our, our analytics on our website. I'd, I'd have to, I've never asked. It'd be an interesting question. I think we should ask. Yeah. If we find yeah. out that five people have visited the website in the last two years, we know that it's probably not a good use of money or it's not the best means of distributing, of disseminating information. If, you know, and again, we might find out that thousands visit it from across the globe. Mm -hmm. right. You'll find that Why I visit it several times a week. <laughs> Right. It's would, unique visitors' choice. Unique visitors. Yeah. Would we be able to do a robocall simply, you know, dedicated to soliciting volunteers? Mm. We could. Um, you know, especially if we get the website link with the job descriptions up, and then after that, you know, at least that way you get in everyone's ear once. Mm -hmm. You know, I, this, this is a very subjective viewpoint, and I, I admit that out of the gate. I'm a little worried that robocalls are becoming a little too frequent and people just gloss over them. Their eyes glaze over or their ears glaze over, and they just aren't being listened to because, it's just, oh, another robocall. When, when, when we first initiated this program, it was for true emergencies, and now it's for public information. And so I worry that people are like, oh, I don't care. I don't know. But, That's subjective. I, I don't disagree that it probably is happening. And I would say if we had an alternative that people would listen to more, we would go with that. But we don't. Yeah. So if we get some people listening, that's better than no one. Right. No, my, my point is I'm worried that people are not listening to the things that are emergency potentially directed. It's sort of the boy who cried wolf. Hmm. That's my that's my concern. I'm wondering how to get new residents involved. Like there's like a whole bunch of new houses put in on um, that um, Pine Plains Estates. And I don't really want to pick on those people, but many of them are new to town. They might not even know about it. I don't know. I mean, I don't know people who live on that road, but occasionally, well, you know, one of them will show up for one of our meetings. I wonder if we could like drop a, I don't know, a letter bomb. No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, it seems to me that whatever we do, it has to maybe have a special invitation to new people that this isn't just, oh, you joined the Cultural Council. You've been here for 120 years. You know, that, um, that, you know, th that these are things that we need, we need new people to be involved in. Um, when I, I happen to know someone who, who moved into town and as soon as he moved into town, I got him on the cultural council. And now he freaking runs the town hall. You know, so it's kind of the power of getting new people and then kind of inviting them in personally to, to you know, to be a part of, of various committees that they might have some interest in. So I wonder, um, I mean, I don't know that many people down there, but maybe I should just go for a walk on Pine Plains Estate and start 
introducing myself to people and saying, hey, you might be interested in the cultural council or something like that. And maybe if we put together, not even a leaflet, just a sheet of paper mm -hmm. with what the vacancies are and what roughly what they do, they, that if we walk those areas, we can hand out and people can, or leaflet them. Mm -hmm. We can always do selective service. Mm -hmm. Put it in with the tax bills. And <laughs> yeah. There you go. $50 off if you volunteer. That's only the senior citizen work off program. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, let's try the website first, you guys. And, and, you know. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe you, I, I don't know. I don't know how yeah. to do it. Okay. Hey, sounds like we're going to be done by seven. I hope so. Keep plugging away, Brian. All right. Uh, new business to discuss and vote to make offers of employment for the following positions. How about we skip A because I don't even get that far and people people say they're not interested. So um, mm. I, I need to think on that a little bit more. Do we really, really nobody who wanted to apply wants that anymore? <laughs> well, the two that I've said oh. we were going to offer it to both said oh. no on two different occasions. So is it because yeah. of what do you think? What's that? Is it because of money? Uh, the first one was the, the, the candidate had accepted a full-time job and the other one was they wanted to, they decided to stay in their existing job. So. Um, okay. So that's, that's still to be decided. Um, okay. So assistant treasure collector, um, that's the position that, that Janet had held. Um, so Janet has moved on to, uh, the Foothills health district. Uh, they were able to provide her more hours. She was working there before as well. Um, this is really, uh, it's a really, I don't want to say minor position because they're all important, but, um, it's really just a payroll position and I shouldn't say just, it's a payroll position. Um, so the hours are variable each week on payroll weeks. It's, it's around 10 hours. And then on non-payroll weeks, it's five hours. So it's really about seven and a half um, per week or, you know, per week per payroll. Um, so traditionally it's been, it's just, um, it's something that's been offered as a sort of an add-on to uh, an employee who works here. Um, and Amy has capacity and she's also trained on the system. So, I mean, that would be mine and Lynn's recommendation that, that we would, ask Amy to do that as the assistant treasure collector. Okay. Do we hear a motion? Moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor to appoint Amy Schrader as the assistant treasurer collector. Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me, yep. So let, let me just make, be clear. Lynn is gonna be Amy's assistant as town clerk and Amy is gonna be Lynn's assistant as treasurer collector. Yep. There's something round and round we go. Yeah. I'm not Welcome sure. Welcome to professional org chart. Uh, I don't think is going to pass that. Uh, yeah. You're fired. No, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just so, wanted to be clear on that. It, if Amy becomes the assistant emergency uh, management director, then we can be the emergency director. I mean, we could figure we could figure something out. All right, Admi uh, assistant town administrator. So that's the first one that hasn't rejected the position, and so we're, oh. we're one out of we're one out of three. Doesn't stop that. Um, so uh, community development uh, administrator, assistant town administrator. Um, we put this position out. We advertised this position probably two or three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, we probably received seven or eight uh, resumes. And um, Fred and I interviewed um, the two most qualified candidates, and I think that they were both they were both well qualified, um, and I think they would both do a great job. Um, 
the one who we're recommending is, is Hannah Davis. She's a, a resident of Waitley. She lives on Long Plain Road. Um, she has uh, experience in in land use and planning and um, some municipal work. Uh, she currently works for a part-time uh, conservation agent for a municipality in Franklin County. So she has, she knows what municipal board work is about. Um, and she expressed a lot of passion for, for Waitley. Um, so that's our recommendation is that Hannah Davis would be appointed to the community development administrator, assistant town administrator position. So well, I'll Jeff, offer the position. If, right. At, yeah, to offer the position. Yeah. Does she have economic development chops? Um, I don't think so. It's more traditional planning. She has a lot of way more technological experience than I do. Uh, she, this, she's this, a fairly recent. Much, but... She's a fairly recent college graduate, so she's got some experience, but not particularly in depth. But she's willing to. Uh... To cut her teeth on economic, we need economic development in this town. Um, and 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 I have no problem bringing somebody on who doesn't have the experience as long as they as they get it, and that they're willing to work hard to figure it out. Personally, I think so. in, in the interviews, Brian and I sort of made clear that there's the job description, but the job may end up being somewhat broader than the based in the on paper description and was that exciting to her yes yeah she, yeah, she I, liked the idea of having different of going from tasks different tasks and not being you know, just in one in one rut all the time okay yeah. i'm just yeah. gonna just go back to the job description but um haven't tried. it was from the previous meeting right yeah well it wouldn't happen in this packet sorry about that yeah it was in the uh pre i'm looking through the one for the august 25th meetings documents are long though and it i have to scan through it yeah but again bo both candidates yeah. understood that while there is the job description and that is what they are being hired to do, being a small town with limited employees, people are asked to slide over and do things. Yeah. I'm remembering grants being a big part of that job description. Yes, uh, that was that and, was a big part and, of the interview was and providing about support grants. for planning board, um, you know, and land use related yep. committees was a really big part of it. But yeah, point taken though. As far as the grants, we made sure that sort of the grant searching was working t two ways to have projects and find grants for them and to find grants and then we would find projects for them. Yeah. That's how it works. <laughs> right. Yeah, but it, 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 yeah. It's a two two way street. Yeah. And Jonathan, I talked to them about the about our ideas of, and discussions that the board has had up around exit 35 and, and trying to um, okay. encourage growth in that area and be developing in that area. So New creativity and, and, and persistence. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to uh, appoint Hannah Davis as the assistant town administrator? I move that. we. Oh. <laughs> Go, go ahead, Joyce. Go ahead. You can okay, move no, I, I move we offer the position to Hannah Davis. Second. All those in favor, Fred. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Yeah, unanimous. Okay, to discuss and vote to appoint a select member to the Frontier Capital Planning Committee. Darius reminded me that this was previously occupied by uh, Fred. So. Does it have to be a select board member? It has to be a select board member named Fred. Oh, <laughs> then I think we're set. <laughs> it has to be a select board member, yeah. It they, they do not need to be named Fred though. <laughs> yeah, but that would be like icing <laughs> on the cake. So 
you know, Fred, it's up to you. So, so how, how often does this committee meet? Uh, it meets uh, quarterly. Does it really? That's what Darius says. I don't know if they actually do. That sounds about right. Fine. I mean, if it's the requirement that the representative be named Fred, I guess I have to do it. <laughs> Who's such a sport, Fred? All right. Um, does this require a motion, Brian? Uh, I think it's, I think. Uh, unless one of the two of you wants to change your name. No. Mm. I don't it know what John's middle name is. It says discuss and vote. So I move we appoint <laughs> Fred uh, Barron. Uh, to be our representative on the Frontier Capital Planning Committee. I will second that. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye, I guess. Me, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, next. Um, what else, Brian? Uh, to discuss and vote to request that the Secretary of the Commonwealth designate the town of Whaley as one single voting precinct. I move right. that we request the Secretary of Commonwealth designate the town of Waitley as one voting brief. Aren't we already? I will second that. Aren't we already? After every federal census, uh, you have to redesignate. Okay. All right. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Yeah. Me, yes. Thank Senate you. Town restoration project. Um, phase four. Uh, I put out a uh, bid package on behalf of the cemetery commissioners, and they received one response from uh, Gravestone Services in New England. This is a company that has done phases one through three, um, and it's for the budgeted amount that they requested for CPA. So uh, the cemetery commissioners have asked the select board to award the contract to Gravestone Services of New England. Okay. And move we award the contract to Gravestone Services of New England. I second that. All those in favor. Fred. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Me, yep. Okay, town administrator update. Thank you. Um, Whitley Center Woods. The town was the town offered to do um some culvert work at the street between the, the street and the parking lot. Keith has told me that work is done. Um, so I think in, if they haven't already, I think in, in, in a short while that that place will be open, um, and available to the public, uh, source to see cleanup. That's, this is the, uh, Connecticut river group that has for the past couple of years held a cleanup day in Sugarloaf Brook. I think it's Sugarloaf Brook that's adjacent to Hurley Park. Um, so they're going to be doing that, um, September 18th. It's and... awesome, by the way. It's amazing what they find. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's really, it's, I remember the first time I saw it, I stopped by Hurley Heat for something and they had left it in a pile and I went ballistic saying, who's using this as a big dumping ground? Yeah. They, they brought up an old car one year. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. So I'm sorry, I interjected. Keep going. Um, so that's going to happen uh, September 18th. And if the board's all right, um, Keith is able to haul away the. So they bring up the trash and they leave it in piles on Hurley. He and the, they ask the town to dispose of it. So if that's okay with the board, we'll do that again this year. Yeah. Um, Center School RFI that is available. Um, it's available on the town website. Um, I still want to try to push it out more. I'm going to try to email it to some uh, real estate folks that I know. Um, if anybody else knows any real estate brokers or anybody involved in real estate development, um, it's on the website if if we can push that out. Um, there's food clinics for the uh, senior food clinic on September 30th. Where is and that? It is, I believe it's in Deerfield. Um, and then there is the second clinic for everybody on October 3rd and just get the actual location. Is there any way we can do a twofer and offer the um, COVID vaccine simultaneously if people want it? I think that's a question for Carolyn. All right. I that, will would be, that would be nice if they could.
Uh, it's a drive through flu clinic. How come it doesn't say here? Um, I would ask people to go to our the website, uh, the Town of Whaley website, and they can download the form. And we also have printed forms in the uh, town office lobby. Yeah, I'm just looking at the website right now. Um, I'm not sure where the forms are. Community events, maybe under that one. Hmm. Where should I be looking for it on the website? Um, on the on calendar? The, yeah, on the new section. The new section, the community yep. calendar. I see it as the fourth one down under under the news tab in the middle. News tab in the middle. One, two, three. Oh, right in front of my nose. So it says South Deerfield, but it doesn't. It kind of should say. It should yeah. say. Just a hunch. It sends you to another website. Yeah, mass COVID vaccine. To No, Franklin Regional County of Government. Uh, oh, did I say COVID vaccine? <laughs> Um, People get them confused. Right. Maybe one day they'll be the same. Yeah, there's no information at the other link about where it is. We could do a three for and add the shingles vaccine. Right. Then, and when you click that link, it doesn't actually go to a form that you fill out. Yes. Oh, it does say as soon as there are dates and times and registration links, they will be posted here. So they're not there yet, I guess. Okay. All right. So there's no information about where it is, but I'm glad we're going to have it. Well, I have print copies of the form, so I will scan oh. those and I will attach it to the website. Okay. Okay. Home stretch, Brian. Um, senior exercise program. Um, this is something we should talk about, whether we want to mm. continue this at the town hall. Um, I know they had their first um, they had their first exercise class today at, at 10 a.m. I, I don't know if anybody came, but we had offered the space for for that to take place. We, um, we, we voted to not allow events in public buildings. Right. I guess what's what's safe is safe. So and they are the most vulnerable yep. members of our population. So yeah, the board of oversight is meeting on Monday, okay. um, and I will bring this up as a you know it's getting it, it you know it's getting cold. It's going so, to get cold, I should say. So uh, they didn't want our tent, which had walls and sides, and. We, so we still have a tent heater um, if the oh. South County Senior Center is so inclined, although I'm sure someone will find something wrong with it and we can't use it. Wait, 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 wait. But wait, I'm wait. not bitter. Wait, 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 wait. Good point. The town of Deerfield didn't want it. However, Correct. we could put the tent up in Waitley with our heater and continue the exercise program for an indefinite period of time. There's nothing preventing wait, the town of Waitley from offering that simply because the town of Deerfield did not want our tent. Would it be considered outdoors just because it's in a tent? And if the tent sides are down and it's really got walls, is that really outdoors? I don't, I, I, I don't know the answer to that, Joyce. I do know that you can put up, if, if you put every other flap down, I think it would still be outside. And I think if you have a heater on, the every other flap will maintain some heat. Again, I'm not saying you can do it in December, but you could do it into November, perhaps. So it's a probably, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not against it, but I just, creating another enclosed space with a heater is not going to, really solve the problem. It really needs to be open on two sides and. Right. Yeah. So I, I think we should at least try it out for the, for the, yeah. 
more I think September will still be fine. September will be just fine for that. And October, for that matter. Mm -hmm. As far as legalities, it's a non-permanent structure, so I don't think that it would qualify as a building. Right, but it, it, I, I, I know you're talking about the the health implications and yeah. right. you know, is it de facto inside? Yeah. We, we don't want to look. Like we're getting yeah. around a policy we just passed an hour ago. Right, exactly. right. <laughs> I will make that available if you guys are okay with that at our board of oversight meeting on Monday night. I will make that available, and I assume keep mm -hmm. the thing up pretty readily. The only question is, where would it be? Where is the flattest place? I don't have the answer to that. I don't know. Hmm. I'm thinking someplace near the highway garage, like like where the birthday cake is. Isn't there some space behind that that's pretty flat? Oh, there's the, the the baseball. The, the, yeah, the, yeah, Keith would know. Keith would know where we could put it. You could put the a covered hockey rink. <laughs> Delete the <tender laughs> I knew you'd like that one. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I was in Norwich, New York a week ago, and they put our hockey rink to change. They have huge lights. It's an outdoor rink. I was so jealous. Now, I don't know if anybody uses it, but, I, but they, they did it right. Okay, what else? Home stretch. Um, I think that's it. Carolyn said trying very hard to get Furcock to set up URL for shots. Really watching this, they were, are only going to give us 350 flu shots now up to six to seven hundred. So she's working on to, to see if we can do a twofer. That'd be wonderful. But I think she she's battling a limited number of flu shots, let alone COVID shots. Again, mm -hmm. because people in the state don't understand that, you know, people out, out here in rural Western Massachusetts do have competencies. Right. Okay. Are we done, Brian? I am all set. Okay. Then I would move that we adjourn. I would second. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me, yep. Yeah. Okay. Good night and good luck. Good night, good night. everybody. Thank good you. Night.